Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you guys remember seeing my like latest community post, you would have seen me mention about how much it's been raining here in Australia. Literally for the past um, couple months, it has just been raining nonstop every single weekend. I saw a statistic, I was told a statistic today that out of the 22 weekends we've had this year, 18 of them have been full of rain. So that leaves us with, leaves us with three without rain. And um, that can cause many issues for our plants. Our carnivorous plants that love water can still be affected by too much rain. So let me take you into the soggy garden and show you what's going on. Also, by the way, if you haven't seen the community post, maybe you should think about subscribing to the channel. It's free and literally all you get for it is updates and information and me teaching you about these carnivorous plants every single week. So yeah, why not? All right, guys, so as you can see, there are our plants. We have the aircon on and a dry cycle because it's so wet in the house and nothing is getting dry. And um, let me show you the situation that is going on. You know, obviously it's extremely humid, which is, you know, what I'll get to in this video and wet, so wet that nothing's drying out. So step here on the grass, it's fine. And it gets really bad over here. You can see the grass here is actually starting to, starting to rot away and um, start to die because what happens with the grass and our plants too is that if they don't dry out they rot away and obviously we have this roof which i did a video on um a couple of weeks ago this roof prevents our plants from getting too much rainwater in them and that obviously protects them from the hail too and by doing that the plants are safe and we can adjust how much water we give them how much water they have all that stuff but for other plants like you know this grass here or Jesus, this sucks. Or these uh, Syngoniums, which that one, it came out of nowhere. And this one I put here because that one was so happy. But um, for these plants, they can actually start to rot away. This is disgusting. I shouldn't even wear the shoes, should I? There's no point. Mm -hmm. There we go. Well, what I'm trying to get at with this video, guys, is that um, if you have this much rain and humidity all the time with your plants, your plants can and will die. But let me explain that a little bit more. So I've just moved over to the side, put the phone up somewhere where I can stand where I'm not standing, you know, in mud. Um, it's a little bit better here, but I can now talk to you about what's going on with the plants. So. Like I was explaining to you, if they don't dry out, if they stay constantly wet all the time, what ends up happening is that the roots don't get any air to them. They will literally rot away. And this is something that's very important to remember about our plants. Even though our cannabis plants literally love sitting in water all the time, we do want air to get to the roots. So how do we achieve this? Well, one way we can achieve this is by letting the water trays dry out and obviously not letting them get any more water. Well, you can achieve that by having a roof and you know with this table which by the way is for sale i want to move the countries at the end of the year so if you are interested let me know but anyway don't let them get too much water let them dry out and what you want is your plants to be moist not wet let me grab a plant real quick and i can show you what i mean so over here we have two pots this is a pot that had a plant in it that had an alicia in it this pot is wet you guys can see water is dripping out of it maybe you can't see that there you go and the soil is very very wet and this is a pot of some sunju tuber sunju seeds this pot is moist it's not wet and now the difference is that if you put a plant in this soil they will die because there's no air getting to the roots they will literally rot away and they just sit in water for way too long it becomes anaerobic and the roots sadly die off with these ones they get enough water and they get enough air to the roots which means that the plant actually doesn't die off but they get all the water that they need like they usually do in the wild so let me talk a little bit more about how we can achieve this 
when it is this wet and humid that for the past however many months in your cases. Now, if you're growing your plants outside like I do, you can't control the environment. But if you're one of those people who like growing their plants indoors, you can control the environment much more. You can make it drier. You can literally make the air drier by using a dehumidifier or an aircon. And by doing that, you can make the environment drier, and that means you can water your little plants a little bit more, and when you don't water them and you let air get to the roots, they'll be all fine, they'll be happy. But if you are outside, growing your plants outside, and it's raining like this, like, you can't tell, but it's literally like drizzling, drizzling on me very lightly right now. If you obviously can't switch with the environment, how do we achieve, you know, not letting our plants die due to rotting away, due to there being too much water and too much humidity? Well, let me just show you my plants right here. If you guys can see, we still have water inside of our tray here. Now this video is very weird. It's a very different video because it's uh, very wet outside. <laughs> you can see there's still water in this tray. And there's been water in this flood table for about two weeks now. And that's going to become a problem, but and the, and the reason why that will become a problem is because the water is sitting there for way too long and it's not drying out, so the plants aren't getting air to their roots, as I've been explaining. But the way to overcome this is to literally let the table dry out and you have to monitor your plant's soil water levels. And the way that you do that is mainly through experience. You can tell how wet or dry it is by holding it up, picking up the pots and feeling it, or you can look at the soil and see how dark brown or light brown it is. But the best way to tell is obviously based off of how humid everything is and give your plants about three days. The more humid it is, the more days you should give it. And the drier it is, the less days you should give it bef before watering again. If you're at like 20% humidity, as soon as the water level, the, the water tray dries out, top it back up. But if you're gonna be at 90, 80% humidity, like it has been here for the past few months, then you will leave like three to five days between watering. With this table now and this amount of rain and humidity that we currently have, I must seriously leave the plants without water in the tray for about five days, it's just so that they can dry out a bit and get some air to their roots, especially in winter time or autumn time like it is right now, when it gets cooler and there's less heat to evaporate the water. It's really good to give them the time to um, dry out. Now I've just caught my eye, I've seen a caterpillar, so I need to show you guys this. Check it out. So my friend, she collects caterpillars and turns them into butterflies. So I might just capture this one. And also, you know, it does eat our plants. So let me try capture it real quick. This little guy is most likely the reason for all of these holes on our Drosseregia over here. You guys can tell I have moved all of these plants from underneath the table because it was getting way too wet there. And when the people come to cut the grass, they destroy the plants too. And because it's going into winter time now, they need some more sunlight and it's not too hot for them anymore. So they can, they do well here. But yeah, let me get this guy out of the way real quick. <laughs> so like I was saying, oh. Like I was saying, I will most likely leave these plants without water for about five, three to five days after the table eventually dries out just so that the plants themselves can dry out because they are very moist, they're very wet at the moment, which is obviously not good for them. But check this one out guys, we have a, a mirror coming out of this Venus fly trap here. How cool is that? As you guys can probably tell, the soil is looking very, very wet. And uh, also, with the soil being very, very wet, this is something else that I want to tell you guys. You get mold on your plants. So these Saracenias have mold in them. And with mold, you can get stuff like scale. And you can get, like, you know, gross stuff. But that one there, that one's really bad. So, yeah. The humidity just too much humidity is bad for the plants i mean humidity makes the sun juice look good 
but it does affect the plants in many different ways the biggest one being the root rot and then after that all the pests that are associated with it and yeah check out how wet the soil is here guys and then obviously with it being so wet you get slime and mold and just gross stuff happening guys like really nasty stuff happening so yeah let it dry out give the plants some time without water just so that they can get some air to the roots so they don't you know end up rotting away because that is a big thing with carnivorous plants they do tend to rot away if you don't give them air to the roots which is why i like to say keep them moist not wet so now the question is what do you do when your plants are so wet and you have given them some drier time so that they don't rot away but you're still getting like the mold and the scale and all that gross stuff like i just showed you what do you do with the plants when you're getting all of these pests well it's very specific to the plants let me show you here on this leaf right here i have aphids our favorite i'm just gonna i just pull them off that's what i do with these ones but that does not get rid of them so if you have something like aphids 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 am i saying that right if you have something like them I recommend that you get something like pyrethrin or something like that that is systematic that stays in the plant and kills off the blood uh, the sap or liquid sucking bugs that you know you get on your plants putting them off like this like I do doesn't do much I mean look they're still here they're on like every plant every one of our little little um, tuber sunjus I don't want to show you too much about them because next week I will be updating you guys on them and they're looking really good right now. So make sure you subscribe to see that update video, the second update video of our Tubus Drosera. They're looking really good. But yeah, guys, if you're getting stuff like um, aphids, which you will most likely get at least once a year if you have a decent size collection and they're outside, you need to get something like really good that will kill them off. I'm most likely put up some products right now that you guys can get for yourselves which will be good enough for you to use on your plants, safe for the plants, but also kill off the aphids because they really suck. Besides that, I don't really suggest neem oil anymore because when I last used neem oil, I lost half of my collection because the, what happened is that the neem oil sat on the plants and then it basically caused them to burn and suffocate. The sun here is really intense in Australia, so they really didn't like it. Um, but maybe in your conditions it's different, but for me, I don't really like it anymore. I'd rather just use like Bayer 3 and one which I've been using in the past, or some other type of insecticide that is systematic that kills them forever. And that can work for scale too, because it's a sucking type of insect. Any type of insect or bug that feeds off of the plants, like eats the plants, even caterpillars or something, it will eat the plants, get poisoned and die. And that's what we want. And systematic insecticides go into the plant's tissues, and when the, obviously the bug eats it, it dies, which is what we want to achieve for getting rid of those type of biting and sucking insects. Besides that, if you're getting stuff like mildew and um, it's like that gross scaly mold algae stuff, what you can do for algae and slime, you can use hydrogen peroxide because what hydrogen peroxide does is that it breaks, like you put some droplets on with mixed with water onto the surface of your plant pot and you like let it sit there and what happens is that the hydrogen peroxide actually breaks down into water and oxygen and the oxygen that's produced goes into the algae and eventually causes it to die off some way somehow i don't think this is entirely correct but it does something like that um, and that all comes down to the plant being too wet because they don't get enough oxygen to the roots and becomes all anaerobic so if that is true that makes a lot of sense besides that the powdery mildew or just mold in general on your plants how will you get rid of it well you're just gonna have to wipe it off of the plants and let the plants dry out as much as you can unfortunately if you're living i mean growing your plants outside you can't make it drier see all our plants here they and you don't know if you can see the rain which is why i'm holding the phone under the roof and i'm standing under the roof you can't stop the rain you can't stop the humidity if you're outside but you can let them dry out as much as you can, but this humidity will still be high. So for gross stuff like that, like mildew and mold and stuff, 
I guess what you can do is use hydrogen peroxide and use a cloth to clean it off. Use like cotton buds, cotton swabs or cotton pads. Clean it off as best you can and if it's really infected like our plants down there, like I will be doing this sooner rather than later, just cutting off all of the old dying pictures because they just look bad and at this point in time, autumn, the plants are not really going to use the pictures that much anymore anyway. So yeah guys, um, it's just a lot of maintenance really with these plants. That's the biggest thing with them and watching them, ensuring that they don't get pests and that if you do find pests, you address them appropriately. Like now I'm trying to get an aphid. There we go. But yeah, I mean, I even have spider mites on the syngoniums I showed you down there in the corner. You know, I don't really know how else to kill them off with, without using a systematic insecticide because I feel like they're the best ones. But yeah, guys, don't know if you can hear that or see that, but it's starting to rain again. So our 10, 15 minutes of no rain um, is done for the week and it's getting very sweat, like humid. So I'm getting very sweaty now. But yeah, hopefully you guys find this helpful. I didn't think I'd make a video, but I thought, let me jump outside real quick and just talk about this because it is such an important thing to talk about with our plants. Too much water and humidity can kill them. Just be careful, guys. So I'm going to go wash my feet, go back inside, and um, yeah, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it. Questions, comments, on, you can ask in the comments, Instagram, Facebook, email. Um, please subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And yeah, trying to hit 10,000 subscribers. We do have some plants for sale. Let me go inside now, guys. Bye.